And a good Saturday morning to you, everybody. How are you on this great day? It is Saturday, the uh, 28th, goodness gracious, the 28th day of, of May 2022. And uh, I, I just, I have to ask, you know, what, what's your Saturday going to be like? What are you doing today? Well, one of the things I'm doing today is going to spend some time with my wife. We're going to go back over to Ringo, Georgia, to the... Uh, uh, 1890s days and enjoy a time at a street fair with has three stages set up on different in different parts of town one on the courthouse square one on either end of town and uh, there'll be all kinds of good music there uh, lots of bluegrass and country and and uh, just a lot of local artists last night we were there and uh, friday night at this uh, 1890s days is family night and gospel music night and uh, boy did we did we hear some great gospel music from local groups that some of them just happen to be nationally known groups like the Greasons. uh that their their sound is just fantastic if you haven't heard the Greasons, then you need to actually look up some of their music they're a great uh gospel music family been traveling the country for years, but they're right here from local in Fort Oglethorpe, uh, Ringgold, Georgia area. Uh, and uh, some music last night from one of the groups and uh, and uh, Brother Cantrell, who is a, uh, a uh, well-recognized uh, gospel singer, member of the uh, 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 Hall of Fame was with one of the quartets and an appointed quartet last night was singing as we were leaving the place and they were singing from the old red back hymnal. You know, some of the other groups were going back to the old red back hymnal. I guess Chuck would Chuck. We're going to have to get with Chuck about this because he loves the red back hymnal as do I. And, uh, they, uh, they were, they were doing the bang up job on a lot of that old, old gospel music that many of us have not heard in years. But uh, anyway, had a had a uh, great time, and the groups were not bashful about saying, "If you don't know Jesus, uh, get with us when we get off stage. We want to introduce you to him." And uh, about ministering, and boy, some of the music was just fantastic. Talk with Jeff Hollander for a few minutes, and and who is an old family friend, and uh, uh, just. Had a great time, had a great time, and uh, uh, the uh, uh, and the, they're going to be coming to Grace Fellowship Church here real soon. As soon as we can get that building open, and maybe maybe before then, who knows? We're we're going to work on some things, but uh, well, they're going to come, and I think we can probably get a few others to come. We'll put on a big old gospel concert, big old uh, <clears throat> old fashioned gospel singing convention type concert. That is nothing more than ministry. Nothing more than ministry, folks. And uh, we, uh, it's it's great when you can do this kind of stuff. And this is designated by the city of Ringgold as Family Gospel and Gospel Music Night. Only gospel music on Friday nights during 1890s days, which is a big Memorial Day weekend. And another thing, two other things about Ringgold that you may not know, they put up crosses and uh, they put up flags every memorial day lining the streets of all of the uh katusa county uh area veterans in recognition of them and uh, each one of them that has a bracket that they that that the flag sets on it's a cross or if they're jewish it's the, uh, the star of david it has their name and uh, rank and the branch of service that they were in and what uh, battles they served in or what wars they served in and such a tremendous tribute and of course on the side of one of the downtown buildings they now have a bigger than life painting of none other than uh their one of their most famous uh uh non-hometown girls who thinks of Ringgold is her second hometown and that's none other than Dolly Parton. So there are lots, lots of things to see here in Northwest Georgia. Lots of things to do always. Next Saturday will be a uh, Honey Bee Festival in downtown Lafayette, one of the biggest uh, festivals in the region. Uh, had to be canceled the last couple of years because of COVID, but 
The last one they had 60, they estimated the crowd at 65,000 people in a town of less than 10,000. So, folks, if you live in, in the Chattanooga area, uh, you can either pay $100 for tickets to go to a, a big concert in downtown Chattanooga, Riverbend, or you can come over to Lafayette, Georgia, about 25 miles south of town and get all the music for free coming off of three different stages, including a couple of uh, country music artists that will be here that are nationally known, uh, courtesy of the big country music station here in Chattanooga, US 101. Anyway, uh, if you don't have anything to do and you're anywhere close to Lafayette, Georgia next Saturday, then uh, come on down. Lots of good food and everything. And we'll be there with uh, with the booth trying to sell a few books and and talk to a lot of people. And uh, folks, get out, socialize, get with other people. I'm telling you, it's important that we be visible in the community and that we be visible with our testimonies. Amen. Amen. Let's open in a word of prayer this morning. Continue to remember all the prayer requests. And let's <clears throat> let's continue to pray that the Lord will open the doors for us to get this church building open really, really soon. We've got a few things that have to be done, but we're just believing God for miracles, okay? Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you, and we give you the glory, and the honor, and the praise. And we thank you that you are bigger than any problem we're ever going to face. You're bigger than any situation, and you're much more intelligent than any counselor we can have on earth. So, Father, by your Holy Spirit, lead us, guide us, direct us. Let every footstep that we have be the one that you have ordered for us. And may, may every one of these prayer requests, Lord, that we've made known before you today and over the last few days and the last few weeks, Father, touch every one of them. Lord, touch Heather. Restore her sight. Lord, touch Tammy. Lord, and, and, and heal her and deliver her from this affliction. And Lord, touch in the finances of those that are so desperately in need of financial help. Lord, help them in ways that they never imagined possible. Lord, direct and guide and lead us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, I'm going to try quickly to summarize this, uh, this that I've been talking about this week, about the coming hurricanes of the Holy Ghost. And uh, I've, I've decided also that it's time to put this, put this to a book. So this this will be a project I'll be working on here over the next next few months and hopefully have it finished by the end of summer and uh, ready for publication. But it'll be the seven the seven hurricanes of the Holy Ghost. And uh, uh, we pray that it'll be a blessing to you. We've already talked about two of two of these. I'm going to go back and and mention them. And of course, the first first hurricane of the Holy Ghost it's holiness, holiness, sometimes called purity, holiness. And uh, I, I made a statement, and I wrote it down here. The breath of truth is the wind of the Holy Spirit. And I think we need to keep that in mind. We need to remember that. The breath of truth is the wind of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that that, uh, the, that Jesus would, would have to leave here physically, <clears throat> but that he would send us another comforter. And that, that, that the comforter would lead us into all truth. Well, that comforter is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit came in, in, a, in a totally new manner on the day of Pentecost, which will be June the 5th of this year. 50 days after Passover, 10 days after the ascension of Jesus. I think it's important that we think about that for a second 10 days afterwards seven and three two numbers from that that make the number 10 five and two two numbers that make the number 10 seven and three both are numbers of completion in biblical numerology the number five the number of grace the number two the number of unity the number six and the number four. The number six being 
You ready for this? The number six being the number of man. And the number four being new beginnings. So any way you want to put it. And the number 50 being year of Jubilee. Ten days after 40. Oh, well. I could get off onto that because there's a lot to be. Look, nothing is an accident when it comes with God. And that's what we have to understand. There are no such things as accidents when it comes to the Holy Spirit, when it comes to God, the father, the mind of God, when it comes to God, the son, Jesus Christ, nothing is an accident. Everything is a planned strategy. It's a planned strategy. Nothing is an accident. So if you think your life is nothing but accidents, then one of two things is happening. Number one, you don't know God and his plan for your life, much less following it. And number two, you're letting the devil interfere with everything that you try to do. And by doing so, you're listening to him more than you're listening to the Lord. There are no accidents with God. Amen. Amen. We can get off on, onto that one too. Number two, hurricane number two, intercessory prayer. <clears throat> there are so many reasons why we need to pray as intercessors. To inter an intercessor, the key word is intercede. In other words, to step in between, to to interfere, and and I, I just I have to do this, okay? I'm looking up the definition for intercede. Okay, it's a simple definition. It means to intervene on behalf. Of someone or of another to intervene, to negotiate, to arbitrate, to mediate. Jesus is our intercessor. And if we, we use him as our example, then we will intercede as well. What does it mean in the Bible? It means it means to petition, to portray, to entre to to pray, to to entreaty the favor of another. So so folks, to intercede. Intercession is not some magic pill, but it is an act. It is an act. It is something that is done, and, and it is something that that has to be done if you're going to see success number three on these hurricanes this list of hurricanes is unfettered praise have you noticed that when you begin to praise god things change rush taft wrote a song many years ago says when you're up against the struggle that shatters all your dreams and your hopes have been so cruelly crushed by satan's manifested schemes when it seems that no, that the, uh, well, I forgot the words to it. <laughs> to submit to earthly fears. Don't let the faith you're standing in seem to disappear. Don't let the faith you're standing in seem to disappear. Praise the Lord. He can work through those who praise him. Unfettered praise releases the bonds of impurity. And it opens up the release of the Holy Spirit. When we begin to praise God, we begin to release the Lord to move in circumstances. So although it's important to pray, it's important to go from intercessory prayer into a throne room experience of unfettered praise. I get so tired of these little things that pop up all the time on my computer screen. Unfettered praise brings us into the presence of God. But what is unfettered praise? Unfettered means 
set free. That means released. And when we release ourselves in praise and worship to him, when we get out of our religious mode, when we get out of our religion and start working in relationship, things will change. Things will change. And they'll either change the circumstances or it'll change our attitude. Fourth hurricane, hurricane of anointing. When the anointing begins to flow, it is because of unfettered praise. It's because people have released themselves into the presence of God. How do you do that? Number one, quit being a Pharisee. Number two, stop being religious. You can't be religious and let religion control you and ideologies control you if you're going to get into the presence of God. That is the problem that most people have. They have, they have such a strong, how do you say it nicely? They have such a strong ideology of, of, of what the Bible says and how everything has to happen. And, and the first argument they'll use with you is, well, everything needs to be done decently and in order. There is nothing indecent or out of order about the flowing of unfettered praise, and there's nothing indecent or out of order about the flowing of the anointing. What is indecent and out of order is to put God into a box and say, he can only move the way I think he ought to move. And that's the way it is. When we do that, we're rebelling against the Holy Spirit. And I believe the Bible says that we're not supposed to constrain, constrain the Holy Spirit. But we'll do it with our ideologies and we'll do it with our religion. Religion puts people into bondage. Religion puts people into boxes, into cages, and then tells God, you can't move except in this cage. I got news for you. I have seen the Lord move in ways that, <laughs> oh my goodness. Some of the people that have hung out with me over the years can tell you what I'm talking about. When you get away from putting God into your religious box, and telling God how he has to do everything. You will find a place in the Holy Spirit where the anointing begins to flow and the un and, and your pr the praise that you lift up to the, to the Lord will change you and it will set you free. Because remember what the Bible says, it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. What's the yoke? That's the, that's the big old thing that goes on the shoulders of the oxen. Or, go, or hangs around the neck of a, uh, of a mule that's attached to all the load that's behind it. If you want the yoke of this world broken in your life, it's only going to happen through the anointing. It's not going to happen through your knowledge of the word. I've studied the Bible for years, and this is what the Bible tells me. Yeah, you may know the you you you're like some of those engineers that I had to deal with. College educated idiots. They could quote all the formulas and they could tell you all the theories, but get them out in the field and they were totally and completely worthless because they had no practical knowledge of how to apply all that book learning. And that's the problem with most Christians. They get so wrapped up in their book learning that they forget that it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. It makes them nothing more than Pharisees. You want to get, you want to see God move? You want to see the Lord move? Let him break the yoke. What did he do? What did, what did Elisha do? Elisha wanted the anointing. Elisha was chosen by God through Elijah to be the next generational prophet. And Elisha went back and took the yoke of oxen that he had. He used the wooden parts, the burnable parts of, of, his, of his 
plow, his 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 yoke and, 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 and all that, and burned it to use it to have a barbecue with his oxen. My friends, he he broke everything up and destroyed everything. He couldn't turn back and go back to the way he was. Because he didn't have anything to go back to. And when you get to that place where you walk away from, ev- are willing to walk away from everything to find the place where the Lord wants you to be, your life will be changed. But until then, you're bound by religion. Now we get into some serious things, as if that's not. The fifth hurricane is a hurricane of judgment. And that's the one that comes to destroy and wash away everything that's preventing you from serving God or that's interfering with you doing God's will. And if you think the Lord won't bring judgment down upon his people, look at the Old Testament. When they had to do things their way, God said, okay, have it your way. And then watch me have my way. My friends, you cannot play that silly, stupid little game with God that says, well, I'm not going to act like that because that's not the way I was raised. Maybe you weren't raised to hear God. I'm very fortunate. I was raised in a church that believed. I grew up in churches that that believed in the moving of the Holy Spirit. And I, I grew up in the ministry around men and women of God that, yeah, some of them were Southern Baptist. But they believed in the power of God. And they believed in deliverance. Not because their denomination taught it, but because they had experienced it and they had seen it. And if we don't get set free from the things that bind us and keep us from walking in the anointing and being able to praise God without any restraint, then the judgment of God will come. And he will judge those things. But after judgment comes the greatest part. Because out of the ashes of what's left comes restoration. And the Lord will restore what the canker worm has eaten. Do you know what the canker worm is? I want you to look that up. I'm not going to tell you. I want you to look that up. Restore what has been destroyed. What's destroyed it? The judgment of God? Yeah, probably. What's also destroyed it is walking away from it. Everything that the, that the devil steals from us, everything that we put into the hands of God, he will restore it to us greater than it ever was before. When we obeyed the Lord and left Southeast Texas, there were people that thought we were nuts for moving 800 miles. But the Lord gave us jobs and finances when we got here that we didn't have there. We had a mobile home, Carol's mobile home, and a little building that I had built that It looked a little rugged on the outside, but it was our ministry headquarters. And we had gone through a lot of problems in the ministry there in Southeast Texas. And it was time to leave. We believed it was time to leave. We sold the mobile home for more money than what you could imagine we could have sold a 20-year-old single-wide mobile home for. We got up here. The Lord not only got us into a nice house, he helped us to pay it off. 
So there was no debt. And then the church building. And, and those that watch this program on a regular basis, you know the story there. How the Lord, before we ever even bought the church building, the Lord put in motion a plan to pay off the mortgage. The Lord will restore Not just replace. The Lord will restore. And what he restores, he restores better. It's kind of like taking taking an old car or an, uh, or an old relic to this guy out in California that he has a program on television. That this is all he does is restore old things. And people have, have an idea of what they want him to do. But when he gets in there and his crew gets in there and they get through with it, they are all flabbergasted that it's better than new. That's how the Lord restores. You know why? Because that guy's, that guy's, it's not just a job for him. It's not just a business for him. It is the love of his life. He loves doing it. And you know what? The Lord loves to restore his people. Those who will prevent him. Hurricane number seven is vision. When the Lord has washed everything away and, <laughs> and then restored everything, then he gives vision. The Bible says that where there is no vision, the people perish. In another verse, it says people perish for lack of a vision. When you have a vision of what God wants for you, when you have a vision of what the Lord wants you to do, it will change your life. And it will and as a result, your life will change the lives of others. And that's the seven hurricanes of the Holy Spirit. It's a message that the church needs to hear. It's a message that Christians need to take to heart. Because they can be little storms that blow through and wash things away. Because you remember, they name tropical storms too. And they're not nearly what a hurricane is. Or it can be a Category 5 hurricane that destroys everything in its path. And I believe you make the difference. You decide in your life whether it's going to be a tropical storm or it's going to be a category one, two, three, four, or five, or maybe even a five plus. What's it going to take for the Lord to do a work in your life? What's it going to take? Is it going to take a hurricane that destroys everything? Or is it going to take a tropical storm that brings in the fresh rain? I've seen fresh rain living on the Gulf Coast that was so fresh that you could smell the fish in the air. Well, our time has come and gone for another week. On this Saturday summary, I hope you've learned something this week. I hope it's been a blessing to you. And I hope you're going to go out and be a blessing to someone else. Until next time, this is Rick Talent saying go with God because he has already gone before you and prepared the way. He is your rear guard. And no matter what happens, my friend, he will always be right there by your side.